Mel, use your telephone. Columbo's. Welcome. March Merman has continued. Yeah. A couple weeks ago, you delved into the mind of Murray for the Kojak episode. And wow, people really dug into that brain. Yeah, they did, and they should. Because it was you amazing. didn't make it to the dollar bin. You were sold out on the first day. Yeah. That was incredible. Thank everybody. Thank you, everybody, for... Listen, to that Kojak right, episode. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make we learned sure. a lot about you and I your know, life. The Saganaki cock block. <laughs> yeah, people are still talking about <laughs> what that. What year was that? I can't remember. I don't. Yeah, the Saganaki yeah. cock block. Two thousand something of two thousand XX. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If that, yeah. People, people bring it up every day now. You see what's happening right now? How am I supposed to do this episode with the sun directly in my eye? I'll persevere. I'll persevere. You're going to do like Columbo. You're going to squint your eyes, lose an eye, have a well, glass eye. Yeah, I was going to say, he's got. I'll do a Briscoe. Briscoe? The Briscoe brothers. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so we delve into the mind of Murray. This week, we're doing delve into the gonads of Griff. <laughs> I was like, where is he going to go with yeah, that? Yeah, I don't. That's the gallbladder. I, I can't think of a G body. Oh, part. you went with gonads because everyone's worried about my testicle health. Yes, people are still asking. By the way, I want to tell everybody there's an imaginary person that has contacted me saying they want to thank Griff because. They never thought about testicular cancer until we talked about it for about 20 minutes on an episode, <laughs> and, they f- and they were feeling their balls while we were talking, and they noticed a lump, and we saved their life, Griff. We saved a person's life and their testicles. Right. That's credit to that us. That person, Tom Green. We saved his, <laughs> his, his second nut because he lost the other one like 20 years ago. That's right. That's so right. now he has a testicle. Well, I'm happy to hear it, He can still Tom. ejaculate. Oh, good for you, Tom. I'm, so, I'm glad you, you can ever like Tom. I never got that guy. I didn't know what the deal was. Well, I was in like fifth or sixth grade when he was relevant. Yeah. So yeah, of course I was kind of like into him because he was raunchy. The first time I watched the show, I just felt bad for his co-host though, and I never really liked it. I feel bad. He he's up there with Bam Margera for me as far as he just abuses his parents. Yeah, because they're not. What are they going to do? Yeah, hundred you know? percent. And that's that's the other. Like I didn't really get into him. There was other people at school. Who were like he's the funniest. And when I watched it and I saw his co-host, who was just this awkward dude, and I got. I think I identified. That was like his like real life dude. friend, wasn't it? I think it was. Yeah. And then you had all the parent parental abuse and everything, and so I think I ended up walking away from that more cringed than like he's a really funny person. Yeah, I never got the appeal. Of and him, I right? was fucking like twelve, and I was like, yeah. his humor is cringe I told, and yeah. awful. That was like the story I told you when I was like five, and I saw Dukes of Hazard and go, "This is beneath me." Yeah, I can't, I can't watch <laughs> this shit. So Tom Green's yeah. high brow humor didn't even work on a twelve year old. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good thing he's he's no longer relevant. Yeah, Speaking right. of relevancy, yeah, tippy tap. I'm gonna say thirty eight. I don't fucking it's, know. I think you're right. I think it's thirty eight. Yeah, I've been yeah. working so hard on those YouTube. These are our person. I'm, like I said, yeah, I very I appreciate people caring enough about me to really blow up that Co- that Kojak episode. We'll be doing some more in the future because I can talk about I could I, fuck Golden Globe well, Theater. I'll just drop in just he, do a well, Kojak. Well, here's the thing. Kojak folded into what we do so well. Yeah. And you were like, you had this idea, you pitched it to me, yeah. and I was like, I don't I don't know about Kojak. I don't know if Columbo will work. <laughs> and we did Kojak perfect. Perfect. One to one worked right into our folds. It was like a beautiful fucking uh croissant. Yeah. Now we're doing Columbo and Well, we gotta test our metal, you know? We, we do. This really is a test of our metal. Yeah, we can't just rest on our laurels. That's what fucking shitty podcasts do. That's right. They that get, is what the, they shitty do. Shitty podcasts that get tons of reviews. And, there is a and Murder, Murder She Wrote episode I want to do. I want to find a Murder She Murder Wrote she fan. Wrote. 
I, you know who is? I think Aubra is a murder she wrote. Is uh, Aubra? Yeah. Are you in the murder she wrote? <laughs> There's a Brian Cranston episode that I read about that I really want to do. All right, well, I'll, I'll contact so, her. Yeah, yeah, well, she'll hear it. <laughs> yeah, she will. She she'll she'll tell me about how I made some other Venture Brother reference or something. <laughs> yeah. Columbo. Griff, I got questions because this was the first time I've ever. I've always, obviously, I've been aware of Columbo my whole life. I've got the answers, but I never really watched the show, and so I have questions. Um, one, why isn't there a theme song? Because that was like, like, like the the seventies was all about theme songs. We're not. We don't know what we're opening with. Because right. we, we just usually just go throw a theme song. I love it because usually the theme songs tell us everything we need to, know, need to know about the surroundings, the characters, and everything. Right. There's no surroundings. There's no characters. There's no reoccurrence. There's just Columbo. So you don't need an opening track, and I love that. Okay. Just cut to the chase. Cut the gristle right out of there. We just need straight protein. No cards in this bullshit. Does Columbo always work alone? Are there any supporting characters that show up every once in a while? Yes, there, there is some supporting characters. The longest tenure a supporting character might have is like two episodes non-consecutive. And, and they're usually goofballs or hard asses who Columbo has to win out. So sometimes it's somebody who's more aloof than Columbo, and Columbo's aloofness over-aloofs him somehow. So... There, there really is very little reoccurring characters, though. Is the car important? Yes, the car is okay. iconic to him and his dog. So the three things yeah. that you can kind of tie back into Columbo is my wife, who, who of Mrs. Course, Columbo, there was a short-lived spinoff yes. called Mrs. Columbo. I've never watched it. I know of it. Yeah. but Played yeah. by Kate Mulgrew, who I think she was a captain of... The Voyager, I think, one of the Star Trek. Ones. Oh, interesting. Of course, she was like thirty years younger than Peter Falk oh, at the time. <laughs> you know? That doesn't work out. Unless I, she's... I don't know if they were ever together on the same show. I, I, he probably was on the the pilot. Oh no, episode. they never showed the wife on the show. I'm just saying her show. Like he was he, probably on the pilot episode. Yeah, bet, maybe. And then he just maybe. fucked off. And That'd be interesting if he called, or it would be even better if she just referred to my husband. As he right. refers to her, that would, my that wife. Would, I bet they did that. That would be nice. Because yeah. back then they did that kind of thing. Nowadays there would have been like a whole. Never mind. Right. We let's Columbo. Columbo. How did he come into your life? When was the first time you saw a Columbo episode? So back in the early streaming days, when things were so much better for streaming, where it really was an alternative for cable, you would have like a Netflix that would have so much good fucking content and okay i can't make an argument for netflix today because i don't have netflix myself i don't watch anything that's on netflix now um but back then you know uh there was the frasers the columbos there was all this good shit and it just so happened that i bought a house and i was feeling like i was doing everything right in life you were yeah sure i was i fucking hated that time in my life but um it just so happened that about three months after I bought my house, I got laid off. Perfect. So this is good timing for everything. And it was also um, a month before I adopted one Millhouse, uh, the, the, the fucking idiot dog over in the corner there. And so I had to spend a lot of time with, you know, a puppy and trying to get her out multiple times a night because, you know, I was reading too much about raising a dog and how they need to go out more times at night and the cage training and all that bullshit. So there was a lot of nights I slept out in the living room. And you know what I comforted myself with? Frasier and Columbo. Interesting. So that there. was where Columbo came into my life. Okay. So I was 27. Okay, what was it? What resonated with you about Columbo? Because we pointed out that, like, I, we're, I think this, not only are you guys learning about us, we're learning about ourselves in yeah, these episodes. Yeah, I learned how much I have in common with Kojak, the abrasiveness, the slapping my friends in the face, but they still take a bullet for me. Yeah. Um. Well, I'm an idiot in the environment I work in and make my living off of. And so I find myself often having to pull Columbo's, where Columbo is fucking incredible detective. He's a lieutenant, for fuck's sakes. I don't know where that ranks up there, honestly. I don't know how yeah, the military it's ranks. It's right under captain. It's right under captain. Right. He's incredible. But everybody meets him. 
just like me, he's a goof. He touches things. He looks through the CDs. You know, he's that kind of guy because he's always throwing people off his trail. But he's not a goof. That was what I learned from this. That's his, That's why he disarms people. Exactly. And that's awesome that you picked it up because this is one episode you've watched right. thoroughly. Right. And I picked this one because Roddy McDowell, a fan of uh, our podcasts, you know, right. he's, he's yeah he's been dead for about twenty years. But he showed up several times. <laughs> uh, he showed up in yeah. Fright Night most recently. Most famous for Planet of the Apes, playing Cornelius the chimpanzee. And I, I I love Roddy McDowell, so I also wanted to find an episode that was under an hour and thirty minutes because we're doing a tippy tap here, <laughs> right? And I did try to warn. Yeah, you. I was under the impression these were like the the usual hour act, you know, forty two minute or whatever episodes because I. I was really tired last night, and I still had to watch the episode, yeah. and I was like, hour 15? Yeah. How dare you? Yeah. But um, these were probably, because what they would do in the 70s, and they did it with Kojak, too, they would, like, because TV movies were really big. They don't make yes. them anymore at all. now. Well, TV is not the thing because so, of uh, the streaming. Yeah, so they would just throw out TV movies, and then if the characters became popular, then they get a series. Right. So I think this was kind of like it probably was, the first season of Code uh, Columbo was just a series of TV because the first season only had like seven episodes. I saw. On, no, on you're thing. you're you're dead on. This yeah. was bundled up with like Murder She Wrote and like two other. Well, not Murder She Wrote. That was later. Okay. Probably like I would guess probably McMillan and White. I think that, and it was mostly done McLeod. by Rhett Link and this other guy. I forget the name of them, but they were doing multiple. Of these TV movies, and they would just kind of parse them out over, you know, like the month or whatever. And so that's why Columbo's seasons are weird because one season is like four episodes, and then the next season is like eight episodes. Okay. So it's very strange how they all come into line and everything. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I love doing this in the tech world because it's just like I don't need to have like this confidence. I got my Columbo confidence about me. Oh, you think that'll work? Well, let's go ahead and try it. By the way, listeners, the Colombo method totally works. It's so good. If people is if people think like you're dumb, they'll reveal everything about themselves. To think you. about somebody we know modernly, uh investigative journalist who's out on the streets right now, you just go by all gas, no brakes. That's his style of journalism. Yeah. You just put a mic in front of somebody and let them talk, let them fucking hang themselves out there. Right. Because that's what Colombo does. He's constantly because they think they're, they're so superior to you that you're not picking up on this shit. Exactly, and you're picking everything up. I I, I imagine. Oh God, I we've never done a mystery on this no, podcast. We so might never be, do again. But yeah, you know. so it'll be very interesting how we cover it. But Columbo's thing is always to be like, "Oh, that's funny. If that didn't, if that wasn't the cause of it, what do you think was?" And then the person spiels up a fucking you know lie for him right, right there, and he's like, right. "Oh, I never really thought about that. I'll take that to the superiors." So he's always using the. Oh, it's wonderful. I also noticed this is a very uh, new thing, as far as I know, as far as mystery shows go. You, as the viewer, already know who did it. Automatically, this is Columbo's and then, thing, and yeah. then Columbo shows up like halfway through the episode. You're all you're invested in the murder yeah. first. Yeah, you're getting to witness how amazing Columbo is by seeing the murder first. So usually, murders are called or mysteries are called whodunits, and these ones are called like I, I forget I forget what they call it. Why how does Columbo it? solve it? Why done it? I don't know. Well, we know why. Usually, we <laughs> yeah. get to learn that, and we get to see how. So it's like I forget what they. Somebody had a cool term for it, and I forgot what it was. Okay. But I, I don't know, man. I fell in love with the show. Like, a, It was love at first sight. I watched the first episode. I was just like, I fucking love this guy. He's a weird hobo, man. He's five foot. He's fucking got crazy hair. He's got a glass eye smoking all the time. He's He's got this like... Like, uh, off-putting charm to him that, like, both annoys people but, you know, makes people attracted to him. I just love Colombo. Oh, Whereas now everybody's a hard-ass, like that house character who's a hard-ass, but he's a super cool doctor. I fucking hate that kind of character. Yeah, they're all like sarcastic and shit. Yeah, you know? like Co Co Kojak, loved it. Not right. my kind of guy, though. Right. I love, I don't, I don't really have love for the hard-asses. I, lo I love the soft-spoken, like, well, maybe we should try that. Oh, you're fucking wrong. Well, like I said, the, these these are basically us on TV. Yeah, <laughs> Cause I exactly. Don't, I don't fuck around. I don't have time for shit. I just cut to the chase like Kojak. You, you fuck around a lot. I fuck around all the time. <laughs> yeah. I fiddle through CDs. I fuck around. Right. I f touch the evidence. 
<sighs> so there's your primer if you're not for, you're like me not familiar with Columbo. Now you kind of get a feel for what it is. So I think we should get right into this episode. Whoo! Okay. And so like you said, we start out by learning about the murder right away. And we've got our main character, Roddy McDowell, named Roger in this episode, wearing highest of 70s fashion. Everything was puffy. Everything <laughs> yeah, had huge of, collars. A lot of pirate shirts going on. A lot of paisley. A lot of like high waisted jeans. No ass on Roddy McDowell, everybody. <laughs> oh. Sorry to say it, but he's working in his dark room. Uh, and he's- yeah, I was so confused because I thought at first, okay, he's in a dark room because he's got the red light, so yes. we know it's international symbol for dark room. Of course, that he would be developing film, but he's doing something different, more sinister, if you will. Yes, very sinister. Because well, he's a baby boy, so he's doing like multiple things. He's uh, he was named a chemist at twenty one, and now he's twenty four, and so he's you know he's got his hands on a lot of pies. So Roger is whipping up a cigar case bomb. Cigar case bomb. Did I just enunciate right. that terribly? Yeah, you did. I did. But you fixed it. Okay. Like Ho- like Columbo would do. Exactly. And uh, so... We- I found it was very... It was too elaborate, I thought. Maybe that's because he, he's so smug in his genius that he had to overcomplicate it. Because what I was reading from this scene was, because we see that he's he's got, like, they got the little tiny cigar cases mm-hmm. that, go, that the cigars go in inside the box. Yeah, the metal cases that the right. cigar, individual cigars go into. Right. And now we're talking about a wooden cigar case that, like, 24 cigars go into. Right. And so he... Uh, He's rigging like a couple of the. There's like a bomb in a couple of the cigar cases. Yeah. Right? So his he, he, and this makes this perfect sense to me that he t- he puts a little nail in the the lid of the cigar box and then ties a wire that connects to the a little copper the wire. Bomb. So when the 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 uh, cigar box gets open, it sets off the bomb. But it's delayed. It's yes. not. And did I, I I I was confused. I told you I was tired last night. It's okay. Did. Did he have like a device that would set off like like almost like it like when he when you open the the case it like it uh I don't know what the word I'm looking for but it like trigger tr- yeah like it, okay. it sets it up and then he does the trigger is that what I was no it was not him triggering it remotely in some way it was just- what was that little thing in his hand then. It was, well, he was constantly timing it, right? Because he he was trying to time it out so it would be after he open it, it would take a minute or so for whatever reason. I really don't understand why it had to be a yeah. minute afterwards. Yeah, I did. That's what I didn't understand the, the delay. I mean, I, I, we do now once we see the the ending of the show, right? But yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking. And again, this is the kind of thing. This is why they feed it to the audience because then when you know Columbo's looking at it, you're like. Well, why did it take so long after you opened the box? Because we'll reveal some stuff later. Right. But, oh, my God, we're doing a mystery right now. <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> All right. So we get to see, like, he's mixing chemicals. He's a chemist. I said it. Right. You know? So he knows how to concoct a bomb. He knows how to trigger it up. and every- He's Ted Kavinsky, he, he's the original. A, he's a renaissance man. Wait, Ted Kavinsky? That's Ted, not the bomb guy, right? That's Unabomber, yeah. Ted Kavinsky. Oh, I was. Oh, yeah. I got it right. I'm one. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, he's doing a Ted Kaczynski here. And outside, we see he finishes up his bomb. He's done. He's sweated all out. He's going to go outside. He's traversing. He works on a whole fucking chemical like compound. Yeah, his aunt owns a chemical plant. Yeah. And so, it, uh, of course, it was owned by his uncle, who like just loved his uh, nephew here. But his uncle died, right. so his aunt remarried, and now this new character who's running things, he just also happened to be a chemical plant engineer. He he took over, or just businessman, maybe? Yeah, I think he's more a businessman, because he wants to sell the chemical plant, so I think he's more just a businessman. Right. And so Roger's showing up to have a meeting with his uncle, and- David. David, yeah. DL is Roger calls him. Yes. And he shows up, and he's got a can- we, they, we, yeah, he, they were showing what a free spirit R- Roger is. Because, mm-hmm. like, so, again, he's young. Right. He's got the big, like, male symbol <laughs> thing. On. It was he's, it was supposed to be, like, chemicals. Yeah, he's dressed like Austin Powers. He basically. is. Yeah. He is. Yeah. 
But he walks into the secretary's office. They have like a bullpen of six ladies up there. And he's like going around. He's snooping. He's fucking fiddling. He's like, oh, is that coffee there? And he puts his fingers yeah, in he's it. So low. Low. He's a lovable scamp. Is he's what a he is. lovable scamp. And he gets over to, you know, there's one African-American woman there. And so he sees that. she's got She's got natural hair, which is interesting for the 70s because, you know, supposedly they wouldn't allow people to have natural hair back then. And he sees that. Well, it he's is like, a TV show. So. Yeah, it's true. And he sees that, and he's like, this would be the perfect place to lay some silly string. <laughs> yeah. But he invented, apparently, he invented silly string. That's right. He did. Because he didn't know what the fuck was going on. Every, and he's like, tee hee hee hee. He's yeah. like spraying her hair, fucking her fro. She's like, bitch, you know how hard it is to get this perfectly fucking quaffed afro going? <sighs> and so everybody's like, fucking Roger. <laughs> and, like, there's one goof, like, you know, middle management guy who comes in. Oh, Roger. No, he calls him Junior. Junior? So, yeah, so you can tell there's, like, a condescension. Oh, he probably worked for his original uncle. Right, yeah. Yeah, so he's got a softer heart for him. Yeah. And so he comes in, he's like, oh, Roger, you're so clever. What did you call this contraption? He sprays himself in the eyes with it. And he's like, it's like some kind of string, <laughs> but it's silly. And Roger's like, ooh, that's a patent right there. I'm gonna and see then the one of the secretaries, Valerie, grabs him, pulls him aside, and yep. takes him into like a, another room. Like there's like a, there's like the bullpen, and then there's like a foyer where the her the per, personal secretary. Is, yes, and then there's the office. It's like the main. It's it, it's the main waiting room. It's the yeah. white lodge, if you will, right. before you get into the black lodge. And she's like, Roger, you didn't develop those pictures. There's this, you know, we're like, so we're like, okay. Murray, you see, you're getting the intrigue that's happening here. Yeah. So this is the whole murder setup, and we're getting all that intrigue. Right, because apparently he did a few boudoir pictures of her, and she doesn't want them getting out. Excuse me, I believe it's boudoir pictures. <laughs> Chance Bordeaux pictures. It's just, fuck that up. It's just I'm sorry, It's everybody. just greasy mullets. It's just, and that, I wouldn't want that to get out at all either. So It's just, well, um, well no, this isn't the mid-'80s. And if she, it so it was kind of a situation where he was just like, he talked her into posing for some pictures, and she's like, you didn't develop them, did you? I told you not to develop them. Yes. Just take the pictures. What an age we lived in. Right. I mean, I didn't live in it, but yeah. And so, yeah, he's got her on the rope. She's all sweating it out. Oh, why would I take the? Why would I? Take Roger, those? cool as a cucumber. Cool as a he cucumber. never gets flustered. He just, and he's got a lie for everything in his head. Right, he's right. got this all plotted out. He's a genius, after all. Right, he's a genius. And so he's like noticing that David's bags are all prepped. His uh, new uncle, and he's just like looking him over, and then he like kind of diverts um, Valerie's attention because he's like. Oh, you got a cigar box ready, of course. And she's like, well, of course I do. And she goes into a cabinet to make sure it's safe. And we see David, or David, Roger swipe a little box that I had no idea what it was until later. Yeah, it was the mini cigar case. It was a mini cigar case. Like a personal one that you you could keep in a pocket. So David, our uncle character here, has a pocket. He keeps one metal case (laughs) in one pocket. He loves his cigars. And then in the interior breast pocket, he kept this cigar case in here that he stole. And then his glove box, he kept (laughs) another. Well, fuck. He had a cabinet of like 20 fucking cigars. And illegal. They're all from the Illegal. Yeah. When you're in bed chemical, you know, this is what you do. (laughs) Yeah. So he swipes the little cigar case. He's trying to. What we're going to learn is he's trying to get all the cigars away. Right. Because so, he wants him to open that fucking you know cigar box, and if he has other options, he's not going to go for the box. Yeah. So yeah, it makes sense. So then he, uh, after he swipes that, he heads in, he pockets it, and then he heads in to go see his uncle. And David, he's telling him, "I'm all ready to sell off the company. You're not. You're." Elon yeah. Musk is talking to me. He, he's offering big bucks. He's telling me about tunnels. Tunnels. No one's even thought about tunnels in this country no. since the Underground Railroad. So we got to build the tunnels. Boy. And he's got uh, a goon slash chauffeur in the background, Quincy, who's just chilling, black guy. Oh, yeah. And he's like, uh, he's like, but he needs the stocks of. Of Rogers, who he only owns, he he's owns probably like a one percent stake in the fucking company. Well, Ro- Roger owned enough where they needed him to sell, but what was more important is that he needed his aunt to sell. Right, and the two of them, two peas in a pod. She for some reason listened to Roger more so than her husband. 
So if she, if David could get Roger to tell Aunt Doris to go along with them, she would sell. So he's like, but he doesn't know how to finesse people like Roger. So he's, it's all with that, it's all the hammer with David. He's like, I got a bunch of dirt on you, Roger, and I'm going to release all of it unless you sell this shit over and talk to your aunt. Yeah, and he just starts pulling out dirty picture after dirty picture. You go, you've been to Furcon. I've seen you there. Uh, I saw you hanging out with the fucking makeout guru of Las Vegas Strip. That's not that's not gonna good look for you. And then uh, here's you LARPing wow. in the forest. He really likes dressing up. He really likes dressing up. So Roger's just like, you know what? I didn't really want to run this comical plan anyways. I wanted to get more into my photography uh, lifestyle. Right. So, uh, yeah, you know what? I'll tell you what. I'm, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to sign somewhere? He's like, I need you to go home tonight and tell your aunt that, you know, this just isn't your line of work. So that's all I need you to do. Right. All right. So Roger walks out, walks back into the room where Valerie is prepping everything for the for uh, for David. Yeah. And this is where he's going to plant the cigar gaze he just stole, which was confusing to me. But again, he was trying to plant he's it. He's trying to make it room. look like it accidentally like fell off instead of he took it. Right. Yeah. So he plants it under her desk where she won't notice it no one will notice it no one will notice it and uh, well apparently it works as we'll find out later and so as roger is continuing to leave the office after he's planted the cigar case and everything he notices fergie not fergalicious not singing any rap songs no, no humps his humps are flat oh yeah this humps is, have no mumps the, the, oh, no mumps at all this guy's no. not making any money yeah. he's literally just washing cars for rich people yeah at first i thought he was the chauffeur for uh uh mm-hmm. david but no he's just like the on-site mechanic i don't know what the fuck his job was and for uh Ro- fergie w- roger's telling him you're wasting your time it's gonna <laughs> rain day because he's fucking i spotted this car up so good he's like you're wasting your time it's going to rain today. It's going to get all rainy. And so Roger's got, you know, we saw him lift something. He's He's got all these plans schemed out. So he's like, you know what? I feel like a tube dropped out of my car, which is something in Michigan we all say to our mechanics. A no, tube dropped. No, he talked. No, he, uh, he actually found a tube not working. He said my spark plug, a spark plug might not be working. Oh, okay. That's what it was. Yeah. My spark is yeah, not sparking. Yeah, there's something wrong. And he's just like, all right, I'll check it out. And this is, guys, again. Every, Roger had a fucking cool car. It was like a Corvette or some we, shit. We, I don't, we know don't have enough fans in Michigan. Uh, this is something that happens in Michigan all the time. Your spark plug just stops sparking. Uh, so well, we, they, well, they do. We're constantly going to uh, various shops to recharge our sparks. Well, he doesn't need to because he's got Fergie. That's why we have spark factories. Is yeah. that's well, where do you think you, spark plugs are made? Spark factories. Spark Duh. factories, of course. So uh, Fer- Fergie's like, yeah, I'll do that. And as luck would have it, uh, Roger has the kind of hood where it, it, it opens up from the windshield side. Yeah, well, okay, so the yeah, so it pivots the, at the hook or the at front. the front of the so car. So it's the perfect like block, block in, yeah, which gives Roger a chance to sneak into David's car because he knows he's got that stash of a couple cigarettes, uh, a couple cigarettes, several cigars <laughs> in his glove box. Yeah, in fact, he calls it his cigar box. He didn't call it right. his glove box. Yeah, and that's how he knows because like well, David's always talking about his cigar box. Mm-hmm. Pulls out those things, so now the perfect plan. He's going to be for. He has no choice but to. Get to his cigars out of that box now. Right. This is good. I mean, we are working in overtime here. Not only is this our second episode of the day, but we've done more descriptions than we've ever done before. Well, this is on a this very podcast. detailed oriented episode. This, is a very, this guy's a genius. His plan is a genius. Rhett and Link, man. They knew what they were doing. So then, yeah, Fergie goes, oh, Roger, it's just a tube that was loose. And it's like, oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And then. He goes, well, thanks. You know, I'll get that I'll get that looked at. Again, he's very playful. He's a 25-year-old Elon Musk. He's like, someday I'm going to date a super pop star and fuck her and put two babies in her. And is she, all a, gonna is she a super pop star? I never heard of her until Elon Musk knocked her up. Hey, YouTube says she's got 35 million <laughs> views. <sighs> Nothing fair in the world. <laughs> we should be getting 35 million views. I heard of one of her songs, and I, I was like, okay, that was pretty good. Well, she heard her name fits. 
Yeah, Grimes. Grimes. Yeah, because she looks pretty Grimes. She does. <laughs> yeah. Think so? Okay. Yeah, I'm not into her. I can't. I can't figure it out. Well, she's one of those super celebrities where it's like every day she looks like a different human being. Who isn't a super celebrity now? Who Kim Kardashian. Isn't? She's a super celebrity. But she looks the same every day. Yeah. Okay, getting back to the episode. Uh, David comes out, hops in the car. Uh, Quincy, a man of many hats, including a chauffeur's hat, because he puts a chauffeur's hat on. Yeah. And they take off to go to some uh, like a well, cabin the, or something they have. They're going out to his cabin, and as Dave, or Roger predicted, it's going to rain tonight. And so a fucking storm's coming down on them, and they're just driving off into this stormy night. Very metaphorical there. Very. So Roger, in the previous scene when we saw him in Valerie's office, he was hitting on Valerie pretty hard, which I don't know why Roger's out to... Roger seems to have a pretty good life. Right, but he wants more. He wants more. That's the problem. He's a narcissist. He thinks the world is his play thing. You're right. That's what it is. People are just chess pieces that he plays with. He was raised with a chemical silver spoon in his mouth yeah. so he yeah. cobalt spoon in his mouth cobalt spoon yeah. in his mouth yeah the noble gases <laughs> and so he's taking valerie out for drinks and Val- valerie's a catch for this guy was, Roddy mcdowell in the 70s yeah and he's well i don't know we got to remember Roddy mcdowell's gay in real life so oh he is yeah oh. but he and i i know and i wonder if this played into it because he was totally braining on her no kisses on the lips. He kissed her nose and her forehead. Yes. He breathed the fuck out of her. <laughs> yeah. It was true. And she was really into it. So I don't know what conversation. Well, because she sees this guy's like dollar signs. She's like, he's going to be the next guy to take over the fucking chemical uh, plant because Aunt Doris doesn't have any children. Oh, you think this was a completely unattractive, just I, I just want to live an easier life type well, of Well, no, it's a combination because he was charming. He, he was very charming. charming the pants off of her. He's silly. You know what to do with it. He's got silly string. Yeah. She's probably wondering what's in his pants. Is it silly string? So, I mean, there's a lot working for him. But he needs cover. He needs to, like, you know, make it look as totally, like, he's he's not involved with anything that's going to happen later. Alibi, Alibi. everybody. Right. We got to see this in a Columbo episode. So he takes her to a groovy go-go bar. Right. No Su Manchu. Don't worry, everybody. No 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 Su Manchu here. She's well, over in uh, Vietnam yeah, still. Still in Vietnam. Yep. We saw that on our uh, last episode or two yes, episodes our ago. Yes, la- our last episode. I don't remember when this is coming out. And next week. And and he's like, he's bringing on her. He's really bringing on And we're on cutting her. back and forth. They're laughing about spinach and how there's no freaking waiters. They're all invisible. We cut back to the car. We see uh, uh, David asking about the cigars. He's like, I can't find my cigars. Where are they and like Quincy's like you want your fucking glove box dash let me check oh it's empty I love how they dictate this too I am looking in your glove box now there is no cigar cases no cigars at all in your glove box it is 822 sir (laughs) do you want to try out this cigar box here yeah can I open it for you no 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 I will open my own cigar box (laughs) Keep your hands at 10 and 2. <laughs> it is 823. I will open the cigar box. So he hands it back to him, and he opens it up, and then we cut back to the go-go bar, and we see uh, Roger's got his arm around Valerie, and he's staring at his watch because he, yeah. he, he knows exactly when his, his uncle gets a Jones for us, a nice Dude, cigar. Val's trying to move in. I get this. I've had a couple of ladies get a little too frisky with me on dates. They come in for the kiss, and I'm just like, whoo. Girl, and I'm looking at my watch like, when can I get the fuck out of here? And so that's what Raj is doing. Right. So he's trying to dip, dodge, weave, wob, and weevil. Weave, <laughs> These are bob verbs. and weave. <laughs> These are verbs. Uh, <laughs> so he gets out of this fucking day. He's like, oh, you know what? My aunt's calling me. I feel it on uh, my f- cerebral protense. And Valerie doesn't know enough to know that's not a thing. This is group making the shit up. So Roger's going to take off and head over to his aunt's. They live on like a palatial estate. Well, we cut back to David and the car explodes finally. Yeah. 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 And but, it goes off a cliff on top of it. Because it wasn't a huge explosion. It was a little little popcorn fart. Well, did you recognize the explosion? No. It's the fucking Captain America 2 explosion. <laughs> 
It's the it's that van falling over the cliffside. They just did it in well, the dark. Yeah, Captain America. That was more like a, a hill. It wasn't. It was in a <laughs> cliffside. Was this a cliffside? This was total cliff. Yes. <laughs> they had to use a crane to pull the bodies out. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So yeah, he goes off a fucking cliff, and it's like so long, Uncle David. All right. So Raj, after he is bailed out on Valerie, he's arriving at the Anne's estate. They have like. The fucking chauffeur's house where Quincy was living in the front, and then they have his house, and then they have his aunt's well, house. Was, it looked That's like, how I was understanding it. It looked like, yeah, Quincy looked like he had the Fonzie pad where it was he like did. above the garage. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was. was. You had to take a staircase. The, yeah. the, the, there was a garage on the first level, yeah. on the ground level. So it was, it was pretty cool, but still. So we see Raj arrive. He pulls his car into the garage. He pulls... A bag out, or did he put a bag in? Pulled a bag out. Yeah. He and then he goes upstairs, and he you see him with a piece of paper. He opens the door. He <laughs> like plants everything. They hit you over the head. You hear type, 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 type. You don't see him typing, but you hear it typing. Yeah, and then yeah. was it when he comes back out suddenly? There's our man. Finally, twenty minutes into this episode, we finally get Columbo. Okay. I'm going to make you be honest about this one. This was like 10 minutes in. There is definitely episodes. It was more than 10 minutes. It, probably like 12 or 13. Uh, there's definitely episodes where you have to wait a lot longer <laughs> before you finally see Columbo arrive. And he usually doesn't arrive in this sense. Well, you need elaborate crimes to, for Columbo to solve. You know? Right. Yeah. So Columbo arrives and uh, he, like he's just caught Roger in an act of com- like Roger's completely out of his uh, element here. But Columbo doesn't know that. So Roger's able to play it cool. Oh, I was driving through going to my place, and I saw that Quincy's light was on. So I just want to make and check, check and make sure everything's okay. Like, I, I want to make sure Quincy's doing okay. You know, got to take care of he's He's family. He's family around here. And so Columbo's just like, oh, is he okay up there, sir? It's Everything's okay? Yeah. Well, I don't see why there's any problem. I mean... <laughs> Well, he points out, if the light was on, why is it off now? Right. And he's like, well, I turned it off, of course. What you, you know where his light switch is at? You know, this is like, you know, this is the 70s, man. There's an energy crisis. I can't have these lights on. Yeah. Perfect. He's got uh, He's got an answer for everything. There's almost like a, there's like a, like a, like a game of chess going on between Columbo and him. And he's like, Roger's liking it. He's finally met a mind as equal to his. That's often what we have here, too. Yeah. The first episode I watched was called The Mile High IQ Club or something. And so Columbo had to go up with the, the Mensa group, you know, the people who think they're more educated than everybody right. else. And, of course, Columbo walked in there. He was impressed by everybody. He, he fucking patted their, you know, egos and all that. But he's like, this guy fucking killed him. And they were all like, what the fuck? We never suspected him. How could that be? And it's like, ugh, Columbo, of course. So anyways, now that Columbo is there, he's like, yeah, your Aunt Doris called me in. So Yeah, th- this this part makes absolutely no sense. No sense? No cop is going to show up when someone's been missing for a couple of hours. Not to mention a... It's got to be at least 24 hours before they come. A homicide cop. lieutenant. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they don't have a body. They know nothing. They know absolutely nothing about what happened to David at this point. The only thing that makes sense here is that Doris says, and we can tell by the estate she lives on, she's like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm basically fucking the commissioner. So okay. I called it in and said, get me your number one homicide detective here. Because okay. that's what Columbo says. She, yeah, money she, talks. Yeah, money talks. And so that's why Columbo is here now. And, you know, Raj is just trying to explain it away. He's like, look, Uncle Uncle David was trying to sell off the whole fucking company. He made a lot of enemies with this announcement. He went to the whole board and told them. So anybody could have been out because this is where Columbo reveals that, you know, Uncle was missing. Or Doris reveals the Uncle went missing. Obviously, we saw that he just exploded in his car. And uh, Columbo's just like, yeah, you know, that all seems to be in line. But there's just this there's just this tape that your Aunt Doris told me about. And Roger's, Roger's pulling. Murray, you taught me this word last week. Collar. He's pulling at his collar. He's like, what tape? What are you fucking talking about, tape? He's getting all nervous. He's like, how do I explain the way this one? I'm a genius, but I don't know how to explain this one. They go into her fucking phone room because in the seventies everybody had a phone room. Right, and we have the more, we have a fucking gigantic answering machine, a proto Stone Age answering machine. It's a reel to reel. 
yeah, and it's it like fun. the full like eighteen inch pizza pie reels. Right. It's like a nineteen sixties computer. <laughs> it's like, it's like... I hope Rambo never walks into this room because we know what it'll do to that room. I got to point something out before I forget. Yeah, I know. It was how in our Kojak episode I pointed out how he rarely ever said "Who loves you, baby," but everyone thinks he did. I noticed that I always thought, and I noticed he didn't do it. One more thing, he did not do that in this episode. So is it is it like an over exaggeration to imply that that Columbo always says one more thing? He does it in different ways. Sometimes he okay. he does say it multiple times. Like I can think of a dozen. There's probably like. 50 classic Columbos, and then they brought them back in the 80s and the 90s. Um, and in the original quote-unquote run, he did probably say it about a dozen times, but there's there's usually a moment because what he likes to do is get people amped up and then be like, oh, you know what? I'll just go ahead and leave now. And so then they, they kind of get like that relaxation moment, but then he goes, oh, wait, you know, one more thing. But he doesn't always say just one more thing. Sometimes okay. it's just like, hey, did you know that this or that? So okay, yeah. it, it's spiritually always uh, just one more thing, but it's not always right. to the text. Okay. Okay. So we're looking at this answering machine. Right. And he plays out the it whole. It has apparently an operator that works with it because like, there's a woman talking. Like, Well, I thought what happened is he called in his office where Valerie was working. Yes. So that's what I thought what, what okay. we were hearing. And then he tells her, you know, put it on the tape or something. And David is attempting to talk to Doris. So that's where it's like, wait, how does it go from the office phone to this phone? So I don't oh. get this logic either. This is some yeah. 70 technology logic. And we get to hear the whole dictation of the car ride we were trying to explain earlier. I was like, it's 820. <laughs> Super Tramp is on the radio. I would like my cigar from the glove box, the cigar box, th- which is what I call the glove box. Right. They're, <laughs> sir, they're not he here. He said, which I call the glove box. He, oh, he really explained it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, first, of course, he, he goes in his coat pocket and goes, my cigar case that's in my breast. <laughs> that left, I usually have. In my, in my left <laughs> breast pocket is no longer here. And my right breast pocket. He keeps two. He <laughs> loves cigars. Yeah, he smokes 19 a day. <laughs> Amazing. But don't worry. You don't inhale it, so it never harms you. All right. While that's going on, Roger's constantly looking at his watch. watch? Columbo picks up on that. The, see, the, Murray, this is where it plays into what me and you love. Eye games. Right. Because Columbo, despite the glass <laughs> eye. <laughs> Literal eye games. Not yeah. eyes. Yeah. Eye game. Eye game. <laughs> so he's noticing that Roger's constantly looking at his watch as his uncle starts to be like, give me the cigar box then. So then he's just like fucking, and he's sweating, and he's pulling at his collar. And yeah, it, it's intense situation. And we're hearing on the message that also David is telling Doris that Roger will be coming over later tonight to her home to discuss something. They don't know, he doesn't know what he's vague about that. That's the one thing he's vague about. He's like, Roger will be coming over to talk to you. Yeah. And so Doris is looking over at Roger. The tape ends and everything. And she's like, oh, what are you supposed to be here to talk about? And suddenly Roger's just like, oh, my God, is David okay? Oh, this is so horrible. And he rushes over. He knocks over like a glass of brandy on the desk and everything. He's like, oh, Sergeant Colum- or Lieutenant Columbo. Oh, my God, this is just so unorthodox. This whole night is so crazy. My uncle. Oh, my poor uncle. And we've already established that there was always some tension between Roger and David. So it's out of character for Roger to be concerned about his uncle. Yeah. And and Kojak and Kojak Columbo, Columbo. Picks, picks up on that. Kojak would just slap him and he would he would confess. Right. He Columbo, be, yeah. You know, he, end of episode. That's he why. would take him to like a fucking like uh, 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 heroin hotel and be like, "Are you high? This is going to be you because I'm going to inject you with heroin and let you die." <laughs> Oh, man. So Columbo calls it out. He's just like, it didn't sound like you had that great of a relationship with your uncle. It sounded like, you know. And he was just like, oh, no, we patched that up the other day. Yeah, Here's the thing. We went to Vinny's. <laughs> Nothing patches up a family than right. over a Vinny's. You share a Vinny's. You do it Lady in the Tramp style. Right. 
And then we got a police escort back to the office so we could lady in the tramp and the stalls next He's to like, each other. He's like, normally I get the black Caesar salad, but I got a Vinny special. Murray, can you please remind everybody <laughs> the tomato ratio on that? 75% red, 25% green. So everybody, when you're growing your sweet tomatoes this year, just remember that. For Pluck them when Caesar. you get to that magic. Put them in the fridge, though, because you don't want them to ripen them anymore. No, it's got to be crunchy. You got to get it that perfect ratio. Yeah, no mush. Just... <laughs> You got to hear that. It's like biting into an uh, iceberg lettuce head. It's just a crunch. So now Raj has to explain to himself as Columbo's leaving. He stops him. And he's just like, look, there's no way you can suspect me because it's like if my uncle David dies, the money doesn't go to me. It goes to Aunt Doris. So it's like I have nothing to gain from this. So he's already on the defensive. Right. I don't I mean he really rushes to it. This is every Colombo episode. Everybody's <laughs> right. rushing to the defense. There's no Greg Popovsky's the Spurs coach uh, around. Greg Popovich? What's his name? Greg Popovich. It's not Popovsky's? <laughs> no. It's not Popinski. It's Popovich. <laughs> Soda Popinski? Uh... So well that's because the calm cool collectiveness of of uh Colombo always disarms you. So you're right. like so, so Columbo the whole time has been acting all aloof. And so this is where he comes with his fucking right hook. And he leans day, uh, Roger in. And he's like, is there any chance your Uncle David might have had a secret stop in between the step well or whatever, Outlook Hotel, whatever he was, cabin he was going to? Uh, you know, maybe to see like a woman or something. And Roger acts super offended by that. He's like, well, I never. My uncle would never do that. And he's like, oh, I just, I got to explore every fucking, uh, you know, any, every idea. And so, like we were talking about earlier, Columbo's like, oh, okay. I wasn't trying to insist anything. I, the higher ups asked me to ask these questions. So I, I'll get out of your hair. Columbo goes for the door. He gets the door on the handle. He jiggles that knob. And you're th- everybody takes that. Sigh of relief. And then he turns around and goes, Hey, is your watch broken? So he didn't say just one more thing. He just said, right. Is your watch broken? And Roger's like, What the fuck are you talking about? With Barbara? Well, you were staring at it for a while there, just concerned. It's like, I know a guy. My nephew fixes watches. Do you need me? Do you, is your watch broken? So that's how he disarms people. Right. It's perfect. And Roger's like, No, it works perfectly fine. He's like, Well, I'll be out of your hair. Next day, Colombo, they found the body and the crashed car at the bottom of a, a ravine, a cliff, whatever. So is this a, it was, it was this just for this episode or is it not established that Colombo has a fear of heights? Because I feel like they might have established it several times, uh, but they definitely do. So Mike, Monk, Mike, Monk is an accentuation of some of the features of Colombo. And they just decided to go 125% with Monk. So Columbo definitely did have his quirks like this, where it was like he's right. afraid of heights. So they have to go up to the top of this like mountain on this gondola, and he's like, he's you can see that he's nervous about this. It's shit. great. His glass eyes floating all over the place. His other eyes going the other direction. It's wonderful. It's a very tense scene. It's great. Um and they're, of course, when they get up to the the level they're going to, they're trying to pull the car out of, you know. The well, they're pulling a body. They're pulling Quincy's body. Oh, yeah, body. body. So Quincy's body is being pulled up, and they're like, yeah, it was strange. We just, we found, like, his hat was, like, 200 yards this direction and, you know, all this shit. And Columbo's doing all the math in his head. He's like, they fell over a cliff, and a hat's over here, and. Uh, the, you got the you got the fucking cigarette lighter over here, and you've got all the doors opening again. <laughs> That's a visible man. Once that's in. a feature today. Uh, and then it's of course you got like the fucking uh, Sir Mix Lot mixtape. It's way the fuck over here. Oh. That's the original cut. Oh. I mean, he was in his pioneer days. That was the demo to Baby Got Back. Exactly, that's the demo of the demo. And it was so, actually called Baby Got Front originally. It was. That's weird. Uh, no one talks about <laughs> nailing wool these days. <laughs> no. And so, There's no wool to be nailed. Columbo's just like, I mean, the only thing I can think of is that there was some kind of explosion in the car. Yeah. 
And then he kind of like writes it off. Well, gas tanks do explode. That might be the. This is Colombo again. He's always just like, it just could have been. Occam's razor. He's like the most likely thing is probably what it is. All right. And we're going back over Aunt Doris. She's meeting with, this happens to be Uncle David's right-hand man, Everett. Yeah, Everett Logan. He was the vice president of uh, Stanford Chemical, I think it was. I don't remember. Okay. And so he's ta- he's, he's trying to kind of aid her through it because, as we just learned, they found David's body. And so he's like, don't worry. We're taking care of the funeral. We're taking care of all that. All you need to do is just take care of yourself. Yeah, we learned that uh, Everett and Doris have a good relationship with each other. Right. Yeah. And there was a scene a moment ago where Doris, you know, we talked about how uh, David on the tape said that uh, uh, Roger was going to come talk to her. And so she asked him, what did we need to talk about? Oh, I, I'm done with chemistry. I'm going to move into legal because I just want to learn about legal. Right, because he's also a lawyer, too. He pointed that out when he lists his credentials to Kojak. Right. Yeah. Kojak? I keep saying <laughs> Columbo. Sorry. Rambo? Um, and so he, 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 at this point, it's like, oh, yeah, Roger did tell me that he moved into legal. And Everett's like, legal? What the fuck are you talking about? Right, because this was just Roger pulling shit out of his ass because he had nothing, you know. So that's why it's a bad lie. Right. And so... Everett just so happens to be next in line, because he's the vice president, to run the company now that David is dead. So now we cut to apparently Colombo pulling a griff. He just walks into okay. Roger's like office. He is a huge inspiration on me, just trying to learn about people by silently looking at their stuff <laughs> yeah. without Stalking them little, knowing. Yeah. Yeah. So and uh, Roger's had a great setup. He's had an office with his own personal darkroom, which he was in earlier. And uh, Columbo's inside there, just rifling. Yeah, he's going through the pictures, going through the negatives, the positives. He's going through the chemicals. He's touching everything. He finds a can. He's like, oh, spray cheese. It, it was okay. He is low <laughs> class, so he thought it was spray cheese. Yeah. And he's about to shoot it in his mouth. That's how you, yeah, you eat spray cheese. Right. And it's like, oh, God damn it. And then you just hear that. And then then Ro- they see Roger walking in, and he hears that. Ugh! And he's like, he looks, he opens the door to the dark room, starts cracking up. He pulls out his camera. He's like, I got to get a picture of this. Yeah, that's another thing that Roger does to amp yeah. up his heel elements is whenever people are at their most heated, he takes pictures of them. He loves right. candid, angry pictures. That's right. his thing. And so we get all these pictures of Columbo embarrassed. But Columbo, he rolls with the bunches, just like me. When I get caught looking through CDs, I'm just like, <laughs> you like home too, you know? Yeah, and then Columbo comes into the frame, and he's covered with silly string. Oh, Columbo. And like, and we get a nice scene of Roger picking it off, his, that yeah. beautiful quaff of hair. That- what, are you, what are you doing here, Columbo? Oh, you know, uh, oh, I just heard through Aunt, or I think this is where Roger's saying, like, I heard through Aunt Doris that you suspect murder. And he, Columbo, he's trying to completely distract from the situation. You're into photography? My nephew's into photography. Like, he takes pictures of, you know, like apples on, you know, people's heads and stuff. And this one time he threw a javelin through a tree, took a picture of that. Okay. And it's just, like Roger's like I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, so it completely disarms him. It's doing its job, but Doris told him that murder's on the menu, and this is where Columbo's just like, I I don't know what you're talking about, but what's going on in your dark room over there? And he's like, Were you you weren't fiddling with all that shit, were you? There's dangerous chemicals in there. You could have blown yourself up. And Roger's like, uh, I'll have you know, I have a PhD in chemistry. See this little medallion I have? It's from the Genius Club. And he's got this fucking giant-ass medallion with his Paisley Pirate shirt on. And, yeah. And he's, he's like, like, I got it at 20 years old. I got a hand job under the table at 14. Like, like, I'm pretty cool, Columbo. And he's like, I got a law degree. I got all this shit. I got everything, Columbo. And he's like, well, that, that sounds great. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to get some fresh air. You want to join me? And Roger, you 
Roger. And then there, we're in this weird scene where they're at the top of this, like, I don't know what. Like this, is that the staircase they were yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're the zigzagging staircase. Like, it's like, where is, is Roger's, Roger's office? office on the top of this thing? Yeah. Really, it it was a very interesting. It was just like the director was like, "This is a cool shot." That's basically. Oh no, hundred percent. Yeah. It was just that, and so they're they're coming down the staircases and everything. Columbo's trying to light up a cigar, and Roger's telling him like, "We're on a chemical plant. Right. There's various gases everywhere. We're not wearing masks. You know, we're all going to die a horrible life." Well, they or believe get... in freedoms. So they're not going to wear masks. That's a good point. Yeah. They do believe in freedom. There and... were no mandates on at Stanford of chemical. Yeah. And so Raj starts asking. He's like, I hear there's suspect of some kind of internal explosion in the car. And, you know, Columbo, of course, has to play it off and everything and tell him, like, yeah, yeah, no, it's just a theory. It's one of 19 theories, and it's pretty much the lowest theory. Like, my money's on it was just an accident. Right. It was raining. They went off road. Quincy didn't have his hands at 10 and 2. So Roger's just like, oh, yeah, of course, of course. Quincy, I saw him drive once. His hands were never at 10 and 2. So that's that's the kind of fucking mind trickery they play into in Columbo. So Roger goes on to explain, well, all the execs could have wanted him dead because he was selling off the whole company. Right. You know, they were going to be uh, consumed by Tesla Corporation. No one wants to work for Elon Musk. Well, they might not even have a job, you know. Exactly. So. Elon's going to fucking sell them off down the river. So, of course, they don't want that fucking work. And this is where Colombo finally offers up his own idea of what happened. And that tape. He's like, the tape is my lead. And the cigars. Because they were constantly talking about cigars. There has to be something to do with those cigars. All they talked about on this message was cigars. Yeah, the only other thing that got mentioned was the time and Supertramp. So right. it's like, of course you got to I mean, Supertramp, they're, they're in Europe touring, so they had nothing to do with this crime. Well, yeah, exactly. So yeah. they couldn't have killed your uncle. All right. So they go to Val's office. The office outside of David's office. <laughs> that may or may not be 800 feet <laughs> off near like some kind of smokestack. And she's like, oh, Roger, remember that 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 uh, breast pocket case that uh, David lost? It's right here. The cleaning lady found it underneath my desk. Yeah. Oh, so Lieutenant Colombo's theory that it was stolen can't be true. Colombo's in the room with Roger and them. Oh, so his theory can't be correct. This is another thing of Columbo. There's always this moment midway where the the uh, culprit is just like hands hands clean. Might as well tie your hands, Mister Columbo, because here's your evidence right in front of your face. Fucking spitting venom in your eyes. No way. There no it is. Day. They found the cigar case. And it couldn't be a cigar box because all his cigar boxes are accounted for. That's right. Because there's a little cabinet, and the guy's got like 20 fucking boxes. And he's like, like, by the way, don't tell anybody, but these are Havana cigars. Like He just admits that he's illegal and shit to a cop, but Coach, I mean, Columbo lets it go. He's, well, right, again, because it's... He's, he's, about, tr- the, he's about the murder. He doesn't he's care tr- about that. Exactly. He's trying right. to get acquitted of the murder and make sure he's like... So it's kind of a tit, titty-tat. Titty-tat? Yeah. 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 He's like... Hey, tit look, tat. tit for tat. Yeah. I'll I'll go ahead and confess that my uncle is buying illegal cigars, right. but all of them are accounted for. And right. why don't we give you some of those cigars? Because of course, right? So Peter Falk is a huge cigar. Yeah, buyer. he's trying to buy them off. Yeah, because right. Koja uh, Koja Colombo always has a cigar in his mouth. So Colombo, then he's listening in, and he's getting that look on his face, and that fucking wandering eye is wandering really far. And he, he finally reveals that, you know, I talked to Fergie downstairs. Yeah, some hobo-like character. I don't know what his job is. He just shines cars. Yeah, he's got a newspaper, and he's got a fucking uh, wa- a squirt bottle full of uh, his own saliva. It's very disgusting, and he's yeah. washing windshields. He washed my windshield, washed my car, or my, my, yeah. And so Raj is trying to go along with it because, of course, Fergie told him, yeah, there was nothing, you know, everything was in place, the scar box is in place, his dash was all in order. He's like, oh. So that must mean that the cigar box was tampered with in these offices before it made it to the car. It's clear to me. And who else would have these cigar boxes in the office? Everett. 
everybody. There's like he's like I can name at least a dozen people that were in the oh, office. Excuse me, not not so much Everett. Who could have tampered with the boxes that were in the office? Yeah. Well, because there, there was one box that was on top of his luggage, and that was the one that Rogers switched. Yeah. So they were like, and then Rogers like, well, there's like a dozen people in between the time I was here and there. We saw it earlier in the episode where the executives came in to meet with his uncle David after he had his conversation with David, and he smacked the one guy on the face and everything. So yeah. Anybody could have fucking, you know, messed with that cigar box. So Colombo goes on to ask if anyone's got, you know, else gets these cigars. And that's where Everett yeah, comes he's up. He's like, device. who else smokes cigars here? Well, Everett smokes cigars. So they go to Everett's office. Because he's a VP, he only has four boxes. Oh, right, of course. But it turns out there's only, th- he has four boxes, like, like, accounted for, but there's only three in the cabinet. Right. He doesn't keep track of his cigar boxes, so he calls in his secretary who comes in, and she keeps tabs on it. And she's like, well, there's four. And then right. she opens the his cabinet that has the cigar boxes. There's only three in there. She's like, no, there's four. There's four. I can count the motherfucking four. There's four right. boxes. Well, you got to point out, she's a black secretary. She's worried she's going to lose her job because she's black. <laughs> like, right. You stole it! And well, then that was the end of the thing. You got the lieutenant of homicide here. <laughs> You're going to blame her for exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> It was the black woman. I'm well, sorry. clearly it was a seventy one. You could do that exactly. So she's obviously sweating this one out, right. and she's checking. And she's like, "No, I just checked a couple days ago." And you see, Columbo's light bulb go off. You checked a couple days ago, so there's a day or two in between the last time you checked. Okay, and of course she sweat. Columbo always does this, no matter who it is. He's always just like, "Ma'am, you're not. You're not a suspect. Just go sit down. Keep typewriting." My nephew has a typewriter. My wife's always on about typewriters. Does he always have nephews? Is that his thing? Um, he, who knows what he has in his family? We don't even know if the wife is. True. Well, yeah, I know it's obviously a ruse, but I'm saying he uses this. Yeah, he he's times. always trying to deflect any any uh, like when he hits a person, he knows is in a sp- suspect too hard. He's always like, oh no 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 no, I'm just trying to relate to you, kind of thing. Okay. So he's he's always doing that. Like my nephew's really into photography. That was his kind of like de- deflection. Like, oh no, I'm not yeah. coming down on you as a suspect. My nephew was in this. Right. I'm just trying to. Yeah. So now we know there is a cigar box unaccounted for that could have been involved with this crime. So Roger can't wait to get Columbo off the premises. He's like, hey, why don't we take a ride in my little this little mini car I have? You know what it reminded me of the C Lab carts. Yeah. They had that orange white tin and yeah. Got to go to pod 6. So, yeah, they're they're just driving around and everything. And, you know, Columbo's asking like, I mean, who everyone went maybe through your uncle David's office, but who goes to Everett's office? And of course, Roger says, "Well, everybody goes through Everett's office too." It could have been anybody. All the corporate people who also wanted my uncle Dad could have been going through there. And so Columbo's just like, "Well, that's weird, but here's the thing. I got this letter, and he pulls out this very incriminating letter. And, of course, it's the letter that Roger planted in Quincy's earlier. Right. He finally got it. And so Roger's like, oh, let me see that. Oh, no, no, no. This is evidence, sir. I can't let you see that. So, you know, he's hiding his cards here. Right. I like it. I like what Columbus doing. And he's like, it's just, it's funny because it doesn't match the typewriter it was written on. Like, we search all of Quin- Quincy's place. We can't find a typewriter that matches this font. So that that's the weirdest thing. Do you think maybe Quincy's, like, some kind of... Got a, some kind of other life going on? Yeah, because he's like, I did a background check of this Quincy guy. He needs to be a cop. You wouldn't... You don't think he had a little hideaway. That he could have had another typewriter. And Roger jumps on that. And he's like, yeah, that could be it. You know, he's just trying, he's feeling, he's sweating now. Oh, yeah, he placed on my first. No, I don't know anything about, Qu- well, actually. This is the worst fucking thing. It's like, I was playing a game of cards with Quincy, and I noticed in his wallet, he always, he opened his wallet, and I saw a piece of paper that had a name on it. And like, Harry J. O'Neill. Like, his eyes are that great that he can just see, zero in on this. And Columbo again playing his part because this is this is the thing of Columbo. Oh my God, sir! 
I think you have found some. It's like when Trump talks about how people talk to him. That's Columbo. Columbo is the person that Trump is always talking about. Oh, sir, you have done me a great favor. I will look into this. Harry J. O'Neill. And so he knows he's feeding right into what Roger wants him to because this is the other thing about Columbo. He knows from the first second who it is. Right. <laughs> Every time he knows he immediately who Columbo it is. sense. Yeah. So Raj is really sweating now. So he's rushing to his car to because he's got to cover up some shit. Right. He he lets Columbo go. Columbo thanks him and everything. He rushes to his car and he's trying to get the fuck out of here. Raj, that is. Valerie comes out and she's just like, "What's going on with those pictures you took of me? I thought if I gave you those files that you wanted out of Everett's office." That you would, uh, you know, hand them back to me, and in, in uh, Rogers, like, don't worry about it. I'll get those to you. It's no yeah. big deal. Have you ever heard of vacation time? It's this new concept the fucking liberals are all about. So why don't you go ahead and take take a two week vacation? Just get the fuck out. You know what? Right now, get out of here now. Go out. Go to Gary, Indiana. Beautiful this time of year. And Valerie's just like, well, well, sir, of course. I'll get right out of town. So Rod manages to get off before there's any more confrontation. So now Columbo goes back to the scene of the accident, and he's talking more with this guy like, who's like, I don't know, the forensic Barney guy. Barney Fife. Right. Yet he knows everything about what's going on, like forensics and yeah. shit. And... He's like, yeah, there's this various objects that were just blown in different directions. There was an accelerant. It could have been peck jelly. I don't know. He actually says petroleum jelly. A nice punch up from Murray there. (laughs) He he literally says petroleum jelly might have been involved. So I had to put peck jelly. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. And so Columbus like, hmm, this seems very odd. uh, Like when a car just goes off a cliff, it doesn't burst everywhere. Yeah, exactly. All the contents. So. So, meanwhile, Roger, now that he's planted this evidence into Columbo's mind about Quincy and Harry J. O'Neill, he's got to go to this pad that he knows that Quincy works out of. Maybe his house or something? I don't know. I thought it was this Harry J. O'Neill's fucking place because the cops show up at this place. Yes, they do. So, I think it was. like I, I, I don't know who the hell Harry J. O'Neill is. Right. This is the confusing part. And so we see the bag he loaded into his car earlier in the episode at Quincy's uh, place on the compound, and he un- re- he re- unveils reveals that it was the typewriter that he wrote up the letter on. Right. So he plants that. I think he puts some other evidence in there, but then uh, he allows the cops to answer. Then he makes a noise, and then he gets caught running out the back door yeah, in the he, back alley. Yeah, this is what I didn't understand. He makes it look like he's robbing the place, or, yes. or trying. He's trying to. It's like he's trying to make himself look guilty, like he's trying to cover something up. That's why I didn't understand this scene. Like why? But then again, he. I think at this point he gets off on toying with the cops. He's one of those guys, like serial killers, like Zodiac killer, who gets off on toying with the cops. Right. It turns out what he's doing is he's trying to. Uh, exonerate himself by saying that he's basically going vigilante against Quincy. Okay. Like he figures something out. And so that's where we cut to the cops who, of course, caught Roger outside of his house. And instead of taking him to the station, he was yeah. told to take him to Aunt Doris's house. Right, because she's blowing the commissioner. So. Well, yeah. That's how she got Columbo there so quickly. And, of course, Columbo's going to arrive. And he immediately is just like, what were you doing at at?" Harry J. O'Neill's. Well, how did you know this place existed? You told me you didn't know, and now you know where it's at? So he's heading... He's well, heading he gives with- the lamest excuse. I bumped into like a car dealer who knew about it. It was like the lamest excuse Roger gave him. Yeah, it was half-assed. <laughs> it was complete. Right. It was, yeah. And so now another cop comes in, and he's like, we've got more evidence, so much evidence. we got a dossier from Quincy's. And... This is this is where we reveal that Everett apparently, supposedly, according to this dossier, has been keeping notes on all the people in the company. Yeah, and he's been doing shady shit, too. That's right. And Doris, like, as far as she knew, the, Everett was she could trust him with anything. So she's like, what? What's going on? 
oh, and there's also these pictures of your husband fucking the Valerie. Well, wait, no. See, the thing is, Doris found multiple evidence because Roger planted this evidence in uh, David's pockets as well. Oh, it's true. So she was, he was trying to lead Doris into this direction as well. So she sh- steps up and is like, don't say anymore. I already know. My second husband was a horrible fucking human being. He was trying to frame, you know, frame Everett. He was do, he was doing dirty deeds, dirt cheap on everybody. It was awful. I don't need to hear any more about this. And she's like, I want to burn this evidence right now. And Columbus like, no, you can't. There's a. Mer-. And she's like, do you have a body? She's like, I'm rich. I can do whatever I want. She says, I'm rich. I'm white. I can do whatever I want. I pull a lot of water in this town. Do you have? Any evidence that it's a murder. And Colombo just puts his hand to his face. He's like, no, ma'am, I don't. So you're thinking he, she's about to burn all this evidence. And it, it, it's getting bad. It's looking like Colombo has been bested by these people. But as he's walking out, he, he, he does a silent one more thing where all the cops leave. But Colombo stays near the door and he hears a conversation between Doris and Roger. Where Roger's like, I knew all about. David fucking the secretary, but I didn't want you to know. I knew how much you loved him, and it would hurt your feelings. And he's like, you know, I love you, Aunt Doris. You're, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't stand to see that happen. Right. So. And Co- they even notice Columbo, who is lurking behind yeah. him, and Roger gives him like a look, like, yeah, I bested you, motherfucker. They always do this, dude. There's always <laughs> a moment where the criminal smiles at Columbo, like, yeah, I won this round. All right. Next day, Roger shows up at the chemical plant. He's happy as fuck. He thinks he's gotten away with everything. He's putting on like a real suit now. Right. He's got the tie. He's got it all. He's, he's getting looking... what he always wanted. President. Right. And he's already walking into David's office like, get rid of this shit. Well, before he gets into his office even, he has to go through Val's office, of course. Oh, yeah. She's holding up a pink slip. She's like, Dave, Roger, what is this? I've been fired? And he's like, oh, that's a miscommunication. You definitely haven't been fired. I'll go ahead and get that worked out once I step into my office over here. Right. And now he walks in. He walks room. in. He's like, well, what do you want us to do? Like, burn this shit. The hot tub goes there. Pool table goes there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The fucking Gallagher game goes there. He's just like, it's a man cave now. It's a man cave. It's right. the RoboCop 2 fucking hideout for the goons. You know, it's going to be all that shit. And he's just putting his feet up. He's having a great old fucking time. And then finally, you know, like Valerie chimes in. Uh, Everett and Columbo are here for you. Yeah, I'm busy. Uh, I'm shuffling cards. Uh, they're, they're already in your office. And he looks over and there they are. Because yeah. they, like me, just they just let themselves in. And we learn Everett's been fired because of all that phony evidence. I'm using uh, quotes there. Against him that said he was fucking with the company. So he and he's just like, what? I just, I, I just got fired. He knows he knows nothing about all this dossier shit at all. Yeah. And of course, David or Roger, excuse me, trying to play the fool is like, who fired you? I mean, I'm the I'm the president now. I didn't have fire. And he's like, your Aunt Doris fired me. It's like Aunt Doris. Well, I'll have to have a talk with the sweet old bird. Trying to play innocent. And then Columbo reveals why he's there. He's like, you're not going to believe this. But we found some new evidence at that crash site. And fucking Roger's like, oh, my God. How the f- can I get out of this fucking thing? He, he's looking at all of his pay. Oh, my God. New evidence. Man, I'd really like to be able to go look at that new evidence with you. But it won't exonerate or do anything. So, And Columbo's like, yeah, I know. It's really fascinating shit. I guess I'll just go out and take the drive without you if you're too busy behind your paperwork. And Roger looks down at his paperwork and he's like, well, I guess I could come. Maybe. Do you guys, is there a cooler with some sandwiches in the back? If there's sandwiches, I'm there. So they go back to the crash site. They get on the gondola to go up to the mountain. Well, first, the Barney Fife's goes, hey, here's that new evidence. It's like a, it's a nice velvet bag. It's a velvet bag with the dollar sign on it? Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, this is great. You know, and then he's like, we're going to go up to the top of the mountain for some reason, open this shit. They were going up to their cabin okay, cause to Dor- meet with Aunt Doris. Yeah, Aunt Doris was there chilling out. Yeah. And they were gonna, yeah, he was going to reveal the evidence to everybody. So now in the gondola is Columbo, Everett, and uh, Roger. Right. 
And Columbo is just, you know, talking about this new evidence. She's like, it's just the fast, most fascinating thing. You know, I couldn't figure this shit out. And it's just so weird. I'm sorry. I uh, I kind of thought you were guilty of all this. He's, again, just trying to lay it out there. Let, let Roger hang himself. And he's like, yep. I su- you were right. I did suspect that you made a bomb and put it in a cigar box, but... Now I know it was the gas tank. Cause look in this satchel, cigar box. The cigar box didn't blow up, and he's fucking like hammering it. He's dropping <laughs> it. He's dropping butter kicking fingers. It. Yeah, uh, and Everett's like, well, thank God, you know, like you know, because Everett thought you thought he was being accused of it. Yeah. So he's like, I, you know, I felt a little guilty because you know I thought I was pushing people to the edge, but you know he's not guilty of it. But Roger. Oh, he's got a long look on his face because he's seen that cigar box. He's like, oh, my God, maybe it was an accidental death. And that cigar box is still a live bomb. Right. And so, of course, Columbo is going to be pushing those buttons. This is almost always how we solve his cases, by the way. Not by any real evidence other than what him right. and maybe one other person witness right. on their face when he fucks with them right in front of yeah, them. Yeah, it's a classic cop show thing, the, the confession at the end. Yeah. So he's pushing all of his buttons. He's slapping the cigar box. He's like, I'm just going to open this. I could go, like, this gondola thing makes me so nervous. I could really use a cigar to calm me. And, you know, Quincy wrote out all these fucking things about Everett and how, you know, of course, he wasn't having a good relationship with David and how he was trying to rat other people out. And that was what was in the dossier. And Everett's just like, oh, no, that, none of that's true. And, of course, Columbo believes him because he already knows who did this. And so you just see Roger continuing to sweat more and more. And he's going on explaining more of the theory Columbo is, the forged letters. He's prodding more at the box of cigars. And then he finally opens it. And this is where Raj really starts freaking out. This is where the sweat starts to fucking flow. Right, because he knows that there's X amount of time the bomb is going to go off, he thinks. Right. So he, f- he freaks the fuck out, grabs the uh, box out of uh, Columbo's hands, drops it because he's freaking out. Yeah. The fuck, all the cigars go everywhere, so he doesn't know what, because he opens the door of the gondola. Yep. And he's like ready to throw the shit out, but now it's spilled on the floor. He has no idea which one is. It has the, the bomb in it. The bomb in it. He's freaking out. And yet Everett and Columbo are just sitting back there. Columbo's ready to strike up a cigar. You know, they're just talking and. You know, apparently Columbo explained the whole situation to Everett already. And so Raj, after he's done, like, really panicking, he starts to slowly realize what's happening. And he turns and looks at Columbo and Everett just talking calmly. And he's just like, what the fuck? We There's a bomb on this gondola. So there's the evidence. Columbo's word that he said there's a bomb on this gondola. And so he reveals, oh, yeah, I got an extra box from... Everett's and we scuffed it up and we made it look like you know it went through a crash and everything there's no bomb on it and then Roger finally snaps starts laughing maniacally takes off his genius medal rightfully puts it on Col- on Columbo's neck and then this collapses into a heap because he knows he's gonna get raped in jail you just watched every episode of Columbo <laughs> All the murderers basically just like, fuck, you're smart. It's all about like the interactions leading up to it. The endings are right. always pretty. Yeah, uh, that's the same reason why I love uh, Kojak. The stories are, who cares? It's about the characters. It's about the character. It's about the journey more so than it is about the outcome. Like it, it comes to a fruition that you, you're like, okay, that works. But yeah, it's all about the journey. Because this is back in the days when we wrote interesting characters for TV shows. Yeah, it wasn't just like let's jump to the ending. It was let's go. Well, on. Well, everything is so journey. plot heavy now. Like it's all about plot now. It's not about character. Yeah, you know? and it's about it's trying to it's it's, it's the opposite of Columbo. It's, we're there in the Columbo. They give you the answers from the beginning, and then like you said, it's the journey. Well, now it's all about outsmarting the the viewer yeah. by like red herrings and all this shit, and you know. So, I don't know. Uh, who knows? I feel like we'll never do another Columbo again <laughs> because there's too much to talk about that isn't us just talking about other shit. 
But well, hey. we'll do way. Hey, we'll do more Kojak. I love talking about Kojak. Well, Kojak well, works out perfect. Right. Like I said, that's a glass slipper for us. <laughs> right. Colombo is a fucking. I I don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, and, we'll see. We'll see. I, I was shocked at how well Kojak did, and I know people love Columbo. I know Matt. Matt, we're going to have to do one because Matt wants to do a Columbo okay. episode, and we'll let him pick whatever episode he wants to I, do. Look, I want to talk Columbo to somebody else who likes Columbo. Right. I would love to do that. So, we'll, yeah. so, yeah. So, you'll get at least one more, but I think this is going to do good. I think people want to know more about us through the things we like. All right. So, we'll, well, we'll see. So well, I could talk about betting more. I don't, don't want to hear you talk about betting. <laughs> So there you have it. There's your Columbo episode. You got into the gonads of Griff, and we'll see you for our next Tippy Tap episode, whatever that may be.